Hey everyone, Adobe Max just happened, the biggest design conference of the year, and they've announced some insane level of updates and even innovations coming to the design industry. I'm gonna summarize hours of the event into less than 10 minutes with all the amazing updates that they've announced. Adobe often sets new trends in the design space, so it'll be cool to see this one. The first feature is called Project Perfect Blend. It's a little bit of a mouthful. Now the presenter showed how she easily dragged a guy into the frame in just a few seconds, the software was able to analyze what is the lighting of the room, where is this person or object sitting, to give this almost 3D depth-like effect as if this person is sitting in the room. It changes the lighting on the person or the subject. It also increases, decreases sharpness, clarity, as well as gives shadows to this object sitting in this room. Instead of this human, it could also have been, say, a phone or any other sort of product that you want to display in a certain environment. There are some tools like this I'll pop up on the screen, which are already doing something like this, but this is a huge leap forward because I haven't seen something so refined and so well done before. Adobe will always be the leader in photo editing and this proves it. Okay, this next one is even exciting for UI designers. It's called Project in Motion. And they show this custom software that they've made where they take different SVGs, illustrations, etc., even things like letters, and they apply different animations. And there's a very customized look to each one of these animations. It doesn't look as if it's just some pre-made animation. It fits the SVG with this particular preset that they've applied. And they are basing this on your prompts or description. So if I want a leaf to be floating around or to flow around the screen, it will do exactly that. They're also gonna allow you to add image references to give styles to that particular SVG or particular image or particular text to be able to apply styles while also animating. It's hitting two birds with the same stone. This might be really useful for creating lotty animations for your app designs or web designs. Okay, so this next one got a huge response from the audience sitting in the conference hall. This is called Project Turntable. And all they did was take 2D flat images, which often look like 2D illustrations. And just by clicking one button within a few seconds, they were able to rotate this image around a 3D axis. So you can literally 3D rotate any 2D image and it completes that image for you. So it's making a 3D object out of a 2D image in seconds. And these look very refined. It doesn't seem like it's just AI converting it. It feels like a human spent hours making this. They showed multiple styles, multiple graphics, and it worked very well across different styles. It wasn't just one style of graphic that it can change. You can even create some very unique styles with this. So a lot of 3D styles are very generic these days. You can use this almost Zelda-like 2D look to these 3D objects. I am a huge fan of uh, Zelda, Breath of the Wild, etc. So this really touches my heart a lot. Okay, this next one, again, for UI designers, web designers, illustrators, Project Remix A Lot. And Project Remix A Lot is all about taking a rough wireframe or sketch of a certain poster you want to create or a graphic you want to design. It does its generative film magic. And as you can see, it quickly fills in and recomposes this graphic to look perfect for a certain occasion. So a, a Halloween poster will have these dark colors and weird fonts that they're using. And not only will it style it for you, so it's not just adding colors, etc. It also helps you create the same thing for different screen sizes, for different aspect ratios. So if you want to create one graphic for Twitter and the other for Instagram, the dimensions of it will be very different. So it understands these dimensions and readjusts the composition of your graphic. So on a landscape, you'll find more landscape layouts and on say a portrait you'll find more portrait based layouts so it's literally adjusting your layouts in seconds to be able to portray the same thing on different platforms okay so this next one is called project hi-fi and just like the name suggests it is about creating hi-fi graphics and images out of reference images. So for example, you have an empty wall. What it'll do is it'll reimagine that empty wall as a window or as a scene. You can even give prompts to it and adjust it according to your own preferences. But the fact that it takes a reference image and then kind of matches it with styles and 
a lot of original work that artists are already creating and then turns it into something new, something like a remix of sorts. And it's happening seamlessly in real time. So it's not taking 20, 30 seconds. As soon as you put something on screen, it immediately changes, if you can see on screen. It, even if it is a simple drawing or painting that your child has created, it converts it into a realistic object. Both Google and FreePick actually have done this before. I'll show some examples on screen where you just put a rough sketch on the left and you get a realistic image on the right or an artwork on the right, for example. So this is something that it's not new, but since Adobe is doing this on a larger scale, you'll see more and more companies following along with doing this kind of real time AI. The next one's not called a project per se, but this is called video extension. So with the power of AI and its video generation models that Firefly already has in video editing software like Premiere Pro, you'll be able to press Press a little button which says extend video and you just drag out a video to extend it. So if there's a scene of a man running, it will match it to make the scene a little longer. Right now it's only up to two seconds. So it is only able to extend up to two seconds, but in the future it could be five or 10 seconds. If any of you guys have ever edited a video, you know how sometimes filling blanks and gaps can be tricky. So this is gonna help a lot if you want to extend a scene or if you want to portray something for longer, this will actually be really very helpful. This whole video generation is really being used in the right areas here. It's not just video generation randomly, it's being used to help creators build better. This next one already exists in Apple intelligence or even with Google's AI, you are able to remove objects from an image. I mean, you've all seen the demonstrations, maybe you guys use it, but in their latest updates, they'll be introducing something called find and remove distractions. And this works surprisingly well. So in this large scene that I'm putting in the background, they were able to find a lot of people walking on a trail and completely completely remove all the people with perfect refinements and finishes so that you really cannot make out that there were ever any humans there. No matter what kind of objects they are, it's able to remove it quickly and creates a very clean image. And it can even find things like wires. So a lot of the wire removal, the long hours of removing small tiny wires and uh, little little gadgets and devices from all over the display, it can get tricky and this helps a lot with that. Okay, this next one gives great competition to tools like Spline. It's called Project Neo. And Project Neo is a web-based platform, just like Spline, where you'll be able to create 3D objects in seconds using similar tools like the ones you find in Illustrator or Figma. These are again, a lot of drag and drop elements that you can quickly use, lighting that you can quickly adjust to create both three realistic 3D as well as pseudo 3D or and pseudo 2D objects, which can be very helpful. Spline finally gets a good competition. A lot of other tools don't do it well. If you've ever used Spline tool, this is very similar to that. Tool still seems quite limited. A lot of features that you might find on Spline aren't here. For basic 3D object creation, 3D modeling, etc., this exists, which is pretty insane. One of the most exciting ones for me. All right guys, so I've summarized a lot of what happened at Adobe Max, but this is just a tip of the iceberg. A lot of smaller yet important updates that they've introduced. A lot of things that don't either interest me or are more around ethics and how AI is being used in the organization. So if you want to check those out, you can always do that. I'll have a link in the description to check out everything that was announced. Let me know in the comments if you want me to create a Project Neo tutorial or something like that in the comments below. And also subscribe to the channel for weekly videos just like this one. If you're new to the channel, hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one. Until next time, take care. God bless.